our staff. Uh, so I welcome you to WVU on behalf of President Guy and Brother Mr. Connell, and I congratulate you on this conference and all the things you're talking about. Uh, I'm just here to give sort of an opening blessing on this session, but I always feel compelled to sit, kind of say something meaningful. Uh, we've got some great presentations coming, Easton uh, Knights, Marlon Knights, Paul Lewis, and, and Black Park. Subtitle, which is dollars and cents and raising. Uh, and those two notions conjure up a couple of things for me. Uh, the first one is, is that this is about grazing. It's not the cattle conference or the sheep conference or the meat conference. And it's not the forage conference. It's about grazing, which is of course the intersection of the animals and the plants. And that's complicated. And I know that because uh, in my own doctoral work, which was in entomology, I studied the feeding ecology of insects. Insects are what they eat, just like cattle are just like you and I are, and the behavioral and nutritional interactions between an animal and the plant that it's eating are endlessly complicated. And you guys work in that realm, some of you are scientists, some of you as practitioners, uh, but it is difficult. Uh, it is easy to drive along the roadside and see cows or sheep or goats grazing and think, oh, what a beautiful bucolic setting that is, and it is indeed, but it's anything but simple, as you all know. What happens to those plants, what happens to those animals as a result complicated management decisions, and lots and lots of science that's been done oh, come to help inform those decisions. Well, that's what you're here today to learn about yeah. thinking about. That. So I congratulate you on what you do and how you do it and the struggles that you have in your work. And those struggles, of course, are often about efficiency. And so we talk about the dollars and cents of grazing. It has to do with efficiency, how many pounds of meat or milk you can produce, given the inputs required to keep your forages and your grains and everything else coming along as they should. And we often calculate it that way. Of course, there are environmental issues as well, issues of soil sustainability, compaction, erosion, and all those kinds of things. And that has to do with efficiency as well. So it is endlessly complicated, and I'm sure that for many, many years, we'll continue to meet and talk about subjects of increasing complexity and difficulty, and that's how it should be. I will reflect as well on my own background with animals. Um, the first time I dealt with grazing animals, I spent two summers working on a dairy farm in upstate New York. I spent most of my time either cutting hay or eating the cow. I uh, didn't think very much about how they ate what I had been cutting, uh, but now I do. And then when I was in forestry school, they told us there's only one thing we needed to know about all this grazing business. One simple thing, keep the cows out of the woods. And that's mostly true. Well, I will say later in my own research career, we worked in civil pastoral systems when we experimented with grazing sheep and goats in the woods to help reduce brush and to promote the trees we were after. Uh, much, much more complicated than keeping this tree and cats out of the woods. So with that, I'll turn this back over to Jennifer. I thank you all for being here. Uh, so glad you're here with us. Learn a lot and go out and do good things. And thanks for coming. Thank you, Dean Robeson. I did not introduce myself. My name is Jennifer Williams, and I'm the Director of Agriculture and Natural Resources for the WVU Extension Service. And while we are the Extension Service and the Davis College are two different entities. We are joined at the hip because we do a lot of partnerships and have a lot of joint uh, faculty members. Our first um, program today will be from Dr. Yanwak Park. Dr. Park is an, a, uh, he's an associate professor in the Davis College Plant and Soil Science um, Division. He received his PhD from Iowa State University and he has developed a lot of research tools. Um, he's worked with insects insects and pests in uh, organic farming systems using uh, GIS. He has developed systems that can model the effect of climate change and variability on pollinator bees and associated parasites and crops. And today he is going to talk to you, us about the development of unbeaten aerial systems for pest detection and aerial delivery of biological control agents. So, Dr. Park, we welcome you and look forward to your presentation.
I'm here. What's up? So actually, the so presentation I'm going to show is not going to happen right away. It will take some time, but we'll get there. So we have been using like satellites uh, to monitor the field, the cross, or even you know real estate. Uh, yeah. But the problem is, all right, it's so expensive to get. It. Even this is actually is called. Uh, NAPP program, National Agricultural Photography Program. So every four years, the government fly over the entire United States and take an aerial picture like this, a satellite picture, and then provide it for free. That's good thing. So if this is California. If you zoom in small area, you can see this kind of things. This is infrared, which means the crop is red, okay, and gray is more likely like a brown. And you see a couple of vehicles coming there. So this has a good information. If you have like a thousands and thousands of acres that you build, you don't want to go every spot, right? So you, we use this kind of technology to monitor in a very you know, short period of time. Also, you can hire Seems somebody okay. actually, who can fly over using airplane, and they take an aerial picture for you. It takes about two to three thousand dollars per small area. You can get it. And if you have to zoom in, actually you see it. It's like a less than one yard of resolution. Okay, so it's very good. However, some of this actually technology is not real time. If you take a picture, you have to wait about three months to get the image. Sometimes it's too late, right? I want to see where my like, boats are, okay, using airplane. But three months later, boats will be there? Maybe not, right? So this is a kind of this is good technology, but many times it's out, out there. So, sometimes, not always, but sometimes we need like a, to survey a large area, right? In real time, right? With high resolution image. Especially, there are some areas it's hard to reach, like a, in the middle of the forest. Who is going to go there to get something, right? So, and all of these maybe can be done by using Moment area vehicles. So here we go. What is actually UAV unmanned area vehicles? Basically, no pilot on board. Unmanned, right? So we call it drone. Right? So here we go. Uh, at WBU, we have an aerospace engineer, engineering program. I'm an entomologist from agriculture. Okay? I have a partner in uh, engineering, and they have developed this UAV system many different purposes. So they have, we have like big airplanes, which means it can carry a lot, right? We have also jet. It like flies 150 miles per hour. So which means if something happened very far away, oh, we can send this one to something, right? Because it flies very fast. And we have helicopter. It, it, it flies slow, but it can hover, right? And we have very small, UAVs, which means we can carry it like, very light, but five pounds, ten pounds, or you can put in the backpack, you know, go hike and fly over. So there are actually multiple UAV systems available at uh, WBU. And this is not just an RC airplane, you know, you, you know, fly the small airplane with like a remote controller. We are not talking about those things. It can be autonomous, which means nobody is flying. We program the, the UAV and do something for us. It's possible because those UAV has 
GPS unit. So they get signal from satellite and they know exactly where they are. Okay? And then we program it. Hey, go there and take a picture and go there and spray pesticide and return back. And they will do it without controlling because we already programmed. Yeah, it is. So, uh, in uh, my research team with, uh, yeah. with the All engineers, right. yeah, we have Bad. developed uh, like uh, some UAV systems that can be used for insect detection, pest management, with detection, and any other purposes. So, I started from 2007. I'm going to show you how we develop and where we go. And then, as a grower or as a professional, so just think about it. It's really available. How are you going to use it? In 2007, we did a pilot study. So basically, I want to know how detailed this UAV can see what happened on the ground. Okay. Then, we actually tested what we can detect in vineyard in California. And then, surely, weed can be detected. How about insects? They fly around. So can we detect them? And then, detection is not one thing. How about we can deliver something? Pesticide. Natural enemies, right? Using this technology. So this is what I'm going to talk today. So in 2007 and 2008, uh, we did a proof of concept study in Jane Lou, West Virginia. Okay. And we used the uh, UAV, which is donated by the military. This is actually me, uh, like a, uh, the styrofoam based, based like a uh, small UAV. So what they do is in military, they use this one for shooting practice. They just shoot it down. Okay, so it's very cheap. Okay. So we you know we got donation and we should use it. What we did was we put the camera underneath so that they can take a picture, right? And then we put the black box, you know black box in the airplane, right? It like records how far and where and when they go, right? So we and we put GPS so we can track them down. This is actually one of the first picture we took from the UAV. Not the first picture, but for us, for as an agriculturist, this is the first picture we see. So this is actually the, uh, this is uh, like an uh, airstrip. This is an airstrip in uh, Jackson City. Okay, in, uh, in Jane Roo, uh, West Virginia. And now I'm going to show you. Okay. Can you see this small box? There are a couple of people there. Right? If you zoom in, I'm going to show you zoom in. So now, we know what they do to their little box, right? Give me another one. <laughs> Three of them, right? Okay, how about, can you see a small box down there? Right? It looks like somebody's doing something. I'm going to zoom in. Here we go. Three guys are walking. It looks like this guy has a, this guy has a hat, right? This guy does not have a hair, bald, right? So this is a resolution. What up, dog? Oh, okay. You think fly a little bit lower, right? Okay. So what you're going to do is go in the front right. door, so go ahead and check in, and take your okay. bags upstairs. So one picture, uh, took from the and when you check in, tell them you're going to self park, and then you just park okay. your uh, park this the car in the parking lot, parking you garage. Can see. Can see one more. And then call me and I'll tell you how to get here. Okay, here we go. Oh. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Computer, okay? so, here we go. You see the car, if you have car expert, you may see it, you may know what kind of brand that, you know, the car is. No, it just sort of. And actually, if you look at this corner, there is a green sticker. There's a registration sticker, right? It's kind of hard to read. So somebody may have to figure out what year this will be, right? So, this much of resolution may be enough to detect something happening in, in the ground. Right. So, here we go. Next year, 2008, 2009, we actually went to the California vineyard to detect something. Okay. So, this is actually California vineyard. So, the vineyard we visited has a problem with a morning glory. So, there's a morning glory, like an infestation in a large area. So, we tried to detect how many morning glory flowers in thousands and thousands of acres in two days. That was our mission. Trying to accomplish. So here we go. This is the UAV, side of the 
Because we do not use like a flammable yeah. fuel, so there's no fire, okay? And second, yeah. look at that. This is my engineering partner. He smiled after crash. Do you know why he smiled after crash? You feel that. Do you know what happened after this? We put together with the glue and locked it. We fly again. That's the beauty of UAV. Unmanned. Even there is a crash. There's no, you know, there's no loss of the line. So by having this kind of reserve from California with detection, now actually we are moving to what about insects on the ground? I want to see insects on the ground. Right? <laughs> Here we go. So in, in, in Pennsylvania, uh, we had a small study. So this is about one meter by one meter small plant bed. Okay, we took some plants. And after that, we hide those insects on the bed. Okay? And then we fly over and take a picture. Can you see? This is a one meter, one meter by one meter in a plant bed. Up there, can you see? It's a, this is the glove. That's the size of the glove. Okay. Now we're going to zoom in. Let me zoom in. Here we go. This is what we see. Here we go. Can you see these butterflies? I'm an entomologist. I can hear what the birds are. But anyway, so those are the uh, butterflies we detected. And this is a coffee plant. We mimic like uh, insect feeding. So this part is gone. So you could, we could see it. So we conclude that the resolution we can get is about less than an inch. What they mean is if you drop a coin, okay, we fly over and we can detect it. We don't know. It's a dime or you know quarter, we don't know, but we can detect there is a coin. Okay? So that's the resolution. So anything bigger than a coin, we can easily detect. That's the conclusion we made. Okay, now we should keep looking from the sky is good thing, but we are kind of bored. So why don't we put something up there? Why don't we deliver? So we have actually the weed uh, scientist, Rakesh Chandra. I think, uh, I don't know if he's here or not, but he has an idea. Hey, why don't we shoot insects to kill the weed? Okay, so we, we try. So we work with a minor minute weed. Have you heard of minor minute weed? The weed goes in one mile per minute. So they spread so quickly. Okay, what, how they do is they actually cover the plants and block the sunlight, right? And they potentially kill the tree. So uh, in Pennsylvania site, in Waynesburg, they have a, a really big uh, infestation of the fungi area. So this is a viral minute uh, plant, but can you see some of the, this is shock hole in the leaves? This is done by insects. The insects, these are minor minute, which means those are good insects, right? Okay, here we go. The problem is, look at the size of the insects. This is a penny, and that's the size of the insects. So, people are delivering this one, okay? 500 of them going to the minor minutes when we leave. And then go there and leave. Who is going to do that? How, how big is the West Virginia, right? It's very hard to do. And those minor minute occurs in the middle of the forest sometimes, or steep areas. Nobody wants to go there, right? So then why don't we use UAV? Fly over and detect the plants. The next flight, why don't we deliver those actually the insects that feed on minor minute? That's the idea. So here we go. So we use the helicopter this time because it can hover, it can precise see. Deliver. So why don't we do that later? Go there and then drop a weaver, which is a beater, and say this is my name. And go there and then drop it again. And then we come back. It's all the time. So to do that, because this weaver is so tiny, when you drop it, the wind blows, it does not hit the target, right? So we have to have something to carry. So it's called about the bow. That's what we so basically, this is a bomb. We are gonna, can you see the straw? Inside the straw, we are gonna put the insects. When it drops the ground and hit the ground, it breaks and the insect comes.
tomorrow and then find that we we to see. So can you see we have a flow a flow and then we actually have our flow cloud. We have to have a provoke concept, right? So I use my engineer again. I keep using it. So he drive up to the uh, engineering building and he's gonna drop it. So if he drops on the ground, we have to recover it, right? So here, this is after hitting the ground. The cover go away, that's good. You see weavers here? There we have three weavers. It's so tiny. So we recover them and rear them. So you see, they do one more thing. So they need to be right? Reproducing. And they did. Yeah. So, but now actually we have to go to the field, right? We have to actually do it. So, to do that, we need another thing. So we have a bug bomb. But there should be something to, right? Like a drop, actually, at the right location. So we have to have, we have to have a dispenser, a bug bomb dispenser. So this is a kind of uh, revolver, so the gun, right? You turn it, right? It's the same way. So this will come that way. And then the, the bomb will go drop. Okay. Everything's all done. Okay. So we use the uh, helicopter. Oh, but you can't leave the field. So we put the bomb, bomb dispenser and bomb bombs. And then this is going to turn and it will drop. Whenever the lady reaches the location, but did they also say? Yeah, I think so. I think we're good too. This is point because this is an ongoing project. Yeah, uh, Jay's here, so he's gonna be calling me in a minute to get down here. So, all right, bye. It's the engineer made me. So basically, it looks like a bar. It has a feel so that it really drops the space. Okay, and also we have uh, two different types of. Uh, Oh, 
going out in the morning too. Right. Okay, so we have a lot of you know animals like goats here. Uh, I'm working in organic farms and we always lose our sheep and them. And we want to find them, we chase them. I want to use UAV to see where they are. Especially these animals as a warm blooded, which means if you use an infrared.